Way back in 2018, my extended family and their families came out to Oregon for a visit and we sort of gave them the grand tour of Western Oregon. <laughs> we rode mini trains, and we did the Alpine slide on Mount Hood, and we toured Mount St. Helens and Ape Cave. And on this trip, my mom snapped a picture of all of her grandkids. And we had the idea that, as she likes to do jigsaw puzzles, we would have this photo made into a jigsaw puzzle and we gave it to her as a Christmas present. So that puzzle is now complete, and it's been sitting and waiting for a few months now to be mounted. Now I looked online at how to mount a jigsaw puzzle, and I found that all the videos on the subject were all different and had different approaches, so I took it that I could basically do whatever I want. <laughs> so my idea was to sandwich the puzzle and flip it over and expose the back with it sitting on a piece of foam core. Then the idea was to spray mount the back of the puzzle to a second piece of foam core. So I laid the puzzle out on the table in a location that I could put the other piece of foam core roughly centered on the puzzle. That's what the pieces of guide tape are on the card table. Then I took the puzzle in the backyard and sprayed spray mount on the back and brought it inside, then laid a nice clean sheet of foam core on the back. And this will give something for the, the puzzle to mount to and give me a little bit of a sort of a frame or a mat for the puzzle. And I rolled a little bit of pressure onto the back of the puzzle. Now I know usually with spray mount you do both sides and let them sit for a minute, but I didn't want to get spray mount on the piece of foam core that I was gluing to the back of the puzzle. So I only glued the puzzle, and this seems to work just fine. It meant I had to work a little bit faster. The pieces seem to be attached. And I'll deal with the puzzle not being perfectly centered in just a minute. I am excited to announce our biggest deal of 2022, the 99 cent Maker Mob woodworking sale where inside the Maker's Mob, you will not only get access to learn how to make some of my top woodworking projects, you will also get over 90 woodworking tutorials with plans from YouTube's top makers, like Jimmy DeResta, John Heinz, Neil Paskin, The Samurai, Carpenter, John Peters, and of course, myself. And right now, if you click the link in the description below, we are also hosting a two-month Routerbit challenge where you can upload your projects and compete with woodworkers at different skill levels from all over the world in order to win thousands of dollars in cash prizes from CMT Tools and Taylor Toolworks. So click the description below and take advantage of this 99 cent sale before it ends. And I'll see you on the inside. As part of the Maker's Mob Routerbit Challenge, we have partnered with Taylor Toolworks and CMT to offer the award-winning Italian-made CMT router bits and saw blades. CMT has the widest portfolio of router bits and saw blades on the market and received a perfect 10 by Wood Magazine. Taylor Toolworks carries the largest selection and has the best prices on CMT bits and blades. You can save 30 to 50% off the bits and blades I use in this video by shopping at taylortools.com. Links are in the description below. In addition, use code CMT10 at checkout to save an extra 10%. So please check out the links in the description below. So I brought the puzzle into the shop. My nicest, flattest work surface is the CNC table. So I use that as a big layout table. I made a spacer and used the ruler parallel to the sides of the puzzle to cut the foam core. So the puzzle, in theory, should be exactly centered in the foam core once I cut the sides off. 
So the idea is, is to glue the puzzle down first, not worry too much about how aligned it is, and then cut it to fit after it's been glued. And I wanted a piece of glass on the front, so I marked the size of that. We've had a couple of pieces of glass floating around the house for at least a decade now, waiting for a project. Carefully made the first cut. And with cutting glass, you're not really cutting the glass, you're sort of breaking it along a straight line. So in doing that, I had some setup to do. And remember this tree <laughs> from last week's video? So the slab that I talked about in the video that I did last week that I ended up not using from this red alder tree, I decided it would work for the frame. And what I decided is I could use the pieces that I cut from this for the frame to help break the piece of glass as they'd be the right length and they were just about the right dimension. And since I needed to make these pieces anyways, I can get some dual use out of them. So I cut the slab into the strips I would need for the frame, and I could use those to help break the piece of glass. So I clamped one piece along the line that I had scored, and I sandwiched the piece that I wanted to break off with two of the other pieces of the frame. And I put two clamps on and I decided I wanted another clamp and I walked away. And the project finished itself. <laughs> the piece that I wanted to cut off fell off on its own. So on the second one, I held the piece as I put the clamps on and made a little bit more of a controlled break. But both cuts worked just fine. Now I can start using the CMT router bits. I wanted to cut the relief cut for the picture and the glass into the frame with the router bit. So I put the bit into my shaper and I did a test pass with the piece vertical and that didn't really work so well. And I tried one horizontally and that worked much better. So I cut the four pieces that I would need for the frame down to the right length and jointed the edge I was going to use the router on. And I started to remove the material and make the space for the glass and the picture. I started with a shallow pass and then did several more passes to get the depth that I needed. And it worked great. Once I had the pieces ready to make the frame, I had to actually cut the miters for the frame. I used to have a picture framing sled that I had made from a magazine article. I think this was in 2005. So it was sort of before you could just go on YouTube and find someone doing this project. <laughs> I'm going to make another picture framing sled as I will probably have more use for this than just this frame. So the first thing to do is to make the runner that goes in the slot in the table saw. And I found a piece of half inch plywood that was almost already the right size. I countersunk spaces for the screws on the runner and I can attach the runner to the bottom of the plywood and this should be close to 45 but it doesn't have to be exactly 45 degrees from the blade. I cut the piece of plywood to the right length and I want to attach a ruler, basically a straight edge, to the top of the piece of plywood and the ruler is going to be shaped into an L with a long side and a short side. And I need a spacer to go under the ruler to hold it up from the plywood just slightly. So I found a strip of birch plywood that will work for that. And I can lay out my pieces. 
So you can see how the ruler makes an L with a long side and a short side. I'm going to attach everything by putting screws in from the top of the ruler into the half inch plywood. And the screws that I had were just slightly too long and I didn't really think I wanted or needed the point on them. So I cut them a little shorter and I countersunk and drilled holes through the ruler. I had been to an auction, I don't know, maybe two, three years ago. It was a pillow factory and they had two big lots of straight edges and I, I won both of them. <laughs> so I got a whole bunch of these rulers. I can certainly sacrifice one for this project and I can attach the long side What's critical on this jig is making sure the angle between the short side and the long side is exactly 90 degrees. That's the part that's going to make the jig accurate. I need to make a stop that'll ride along the long side of the L. And I need to cut a little relief into that stop that will ride along the edge of the ruler. I tried it at first by marking where that would be cut, but that just wasn't accurate enough. And I found a piece of the plywood I used to hold the ruler up. And I used that to set the width and that worked a lot better. And I can use the jig to cut the angle on the stop. There's various ways to hold this stop in place. What I thought I would do is mount a threaded insert into the stop. Then I could make a knob with a threaded bolt on it that goes through the stop and into the ruler and it will hold the stop in place. And it seemed to work. So the idea with this jig, now that I'm cutting the picture frame, is you make the first cut on the short leg of the sled. Then you move the piece over to the stop and cut the other side of that side of the picture frame. And in doing that, each angle doesn't have to be perfect, but together they'll add up to 90 degrees. And all four sides of the picture frame should go together, the nice tight joint. Also, with the way the stop works, you really can't screw up which way the miters go. I mean, I'm sure I can figure it out and do it, but it, it makes it much harder to screw that up. And it allows the top and bottom and side and side pieces to be exactly the same length, which keeps the joints nice and tight. It's like perfect. So once the piece was glued up, I wanted to put splines in the corners and I had made a jig for this years and years ago, which I actually found. <laughs> and I thought maybe it would work a little better if I made sort of a zero clearance plate for it. So I added a piece of wood to the top side. And you can see how this works. So I have a, a sort of tall, thick board attached to the table saw fence, and I can clamp the frame to the jig. This all slides through the table saw blade and it cuts out a slot on the corner of the frame. And I have a nice full thickness ripping blade in the table saw. So it cuts a nice wide slot. And I wanted purple heart for the splines. And what I found was this little piece of segmented material. I think this was for the Easter egg project a few years back, but it had a nice piece of purple heart. And it actually makes the spline a little bit more interesting as it isn't just one piece, it's sort of segmented. So I cut some thin pieces out of that carefully. And I can use the miter sled to cut those into triangles, which then fit into the slots that were cut in the frame. And it's pretty straightforward. Just glue and slide them in place. 
I did a little tapping on them, but this may not have really been all that necessary. I think one of them felt a little bit loose, so I used a clamp, but for the most part, I just put them in and left them. Now I can use the CMT router bits again. This time I'm gonna use a flush trimming bit as I can clean up the splines that I just put in. I can run the guide bearing on the frame and clean up the little extra bit of spline. And this worked really well. And with the way the spline was, I could flip the frame over and it, it worked exactly the same as the splines in the middle. Then I, I sanded and I can add some finish. So I'm just using my wipe-on polyurethane and it went on just fine. Now that the frame is done, I can put everything together. And the way I like to hold the glass and the mat and the picture in is to put finished nails along the inside of the wooden frame, sort of like pins. So I can mark the thickness of the art that's going in the frame. I had to find a drill bit that was just the right size for the nails I was gonna use and I can add some pilot holes at the marks that I had made when the art was in the frame. Then I can do a second cleaning on the glass. I cleaned it once already, but it, it still looked really fingerprinty and greasy and covered with dust. <laughs> that side's clean and I can put it in place and clean the inside and I let that dry. I didn't want to put the puzzle down onto a wet surface. I'm hoping it's okay to have the puzzle in contact with the glass. I can gently tap finish nails into the holes that I drilled and let them stick out and hold the foam core in place. It goes up. And it looks like it worked. Now I can add the cable to hold the frame up. So I put the cable in and I filmed it, but in doing a little more research after this, this really wasn't the way to do it. <laughs> you really need to tie the cable to the bracket or to the D-ring. <laughs> so it wasn't pretty. I think my second attempt was a little better. Then I can put it in place. Mom decided that having it in the dining room on the back side of the fireplace was a good spot. And it turned out the wood was a really nice match with the brick. And she's super happy. <laughs> it's better than the photo of the spiders that was up there before. Thanks for watching.